Hi everyone, welcome back to a new video. We already had a look at HTTP. Now in this video, I want to show you how we can connect to another RESTful service, like in this case Firebase, to, to post data and get data and store it in their database. So if you're not familiar with Firebase, you can think of it as like, let's say a cloud database. It's, it's more than that, but that's, that's enough for this video. And what we will do is we will use their REST API to yeah, basically put data there or post data there and get it back. I'll build this simple app here as for this video. Um, I might do future videos where we dive deeper into the whole Firebase API and um, do more stuff with that. But for this video, what I'll be able to do here is I can insert a first and a last name here, set the user and submit it. And as we can see, this is the response we get back from the server and this just confirms that this data was set. Now, if we have a look at the Firebase database, so to say, or the data that is there itself, I do this by accessing my Firebase account here. We see that this data was indeed successfully set. Now, what we can also do is, well, we can get the user and now obviously nothing changes here, but if I reload the page and now click get user, we can see we get back that user in JSON format. Now, first step for you, if you don't have an account uh, with, with Google or with Firebase, is for you to, to sign in or sign up either with Google or create a new account with them. And once you have done that, you should be taken to a dashboard, which looks like that. Now I just uh, hit my uh, my details here because I don't want anyone to access this account, but you should see your URL we're going to use throughout this video right here where it's blurry in the video now, but you should see your URL there. Now just copy that URL when we need it later in this video. So I'm now starting off with basically a clean installation. All I did here was I, well, I, I created the HTML code we're going to use throughout this video. So the form to set the user and the button to get it back and some styling. But you will find a link to the code in the description. So first thing I'm going to do is I'll create a service which will handle this Firebase access. To do that, I'll create a new file here and I will call it fire, firebase.service.ts. And inside this file, I'll, let me zoom in. I'll first export my, my class here, my Firebase service class. And remember the naming convention where we include the type of this class or the, the, the type um, to which we're going to transform this or as which we're going to use this in the name. So in this case, we're including service in the name of our class here. Then I want to make sure that I import injectable from Angular 2 core. And then I attach the injectable metadata or decorator here to, to attach the metadata to this class. Now inside this class, I'm for the moment not going to write like a Firebase framework where we then have a universal or a, um, a standardized way of sending data and setting it and putting it to our Firebase database. In this case, I'm just creating the methods we're going to need for this video. So what I'm doing here is I will create a set user method, which allows us to set a user basically. And this um, method should take two arguments, a first name, which will be a string and a last name, which will be a string. And additionally, we'll have a get user method. And then to just say it again, you obviously could write a more generic class here, which would um, offer you a simple way of putting and getting all kinds of data, but in this case, this will do. Now in my set user function here, I want to access the, well, the RESTful API of Firebase, and therefore I need to be able to use the Angular 2 HTTP service. So to do that, I'll add my constructor to inject it. Here I will automatically bind it to a private property called HTTP, and what will I inject? Well, the HTTP object or an instance of this object. 
Now to be able to do that, make sure that in your boot.ts, where you bootstrap your app, you got your router providers, um, well, set as providers, so that Angular 2 is able to do this injection. Then in my, back in our Firebase service here, what I'll do is I'll first create the body of this request because this will be a put request, not a post request, but a put request. This is because in Firebase or with Firebase, uh, we can use both requests. Uh, a put request will always override the old data or the, the old data we were setting here. Not all the data in the database, just the one we're targeting here. And a post request will kind of append to it. So like a push function on an array. And it will e give each data entry we, we sent there an automatically generated ID. Now, but both can be useful. It depends on what you're building here. In this case, I'm going to go with the put um, function or with the put request because, well, that's something we haven't had a look at until now. So first, I'll create the body of this uh, of this request, and I'll just create a string of a JSON object. And this JSON object is well, basically, one I will create from the parameters we're passing here with a first name of first name and a last name of last name. So a very simple JavaScript object I'm creating here and then I'm turning it into a string. Thereafter, I will return this HTTP put. So this is where I create my put request. And here I now need to target a specific URL. Now this URL is the one you're seeing here, now this just looks a bit different because it uh, is too small to have the normal layout, but this is your dashboard and here it's blurry right now, but here you will find the link to your database. So I'm just copying that and then I have to enter HTTPS colon uh, double slash and then enter the link. Now it got blurry here again, but here is really just HTTPS and then your link or yeah, your, the URL to your database. Now we have to append something to this URL because um, we're not targeting the root directory in our database. Let's say we want to create a user kind of directory or a user element there. So therefore I will target U slash user dot json. By appending dot json at the end of the URL, we're able to access the RESTful API of Firebase. And then I'll also pass my body to this function. Now we're not done yet. Uh, what I need to do is I need to map the response to turned bytes we're getting back to a JSON element. So to do this, I will first enable the map operator of RxJS by importing rxjs slash rx, this will give us access to all the operators. And then, I'll just enter a new line here, I will map the response I get here to response to chase and to basic, basically just transform it into a JavaScript object. Uh, okay, so now we're having a JSON um, element here and we're returning this. Now let's also write our get user function. This one is a bit simpler. simpler. Um, I'm just returning this HTTP get. Now again, I'll take this string here, string from above, I'll put it into quotation marks, from above. And then I will, no, I will not do that. I will again map the response to transform it to JSON. So this should do it. Now back in our app component, I need to create the response property, which is output here. And let me zoom in more. And then I will inject this Firebase service we just created. I will bind it to the private property Firebase service. And this automatically added the import for me. Make sure to import your Firebase service correctly at the top of this file. And I also need to add it here to my providers array to tell Angular 2 that 
well basically how to create this Firebase service. Now I have two methods I'm targeting in my HTML code here. That is the onSubmit method and the onGetUser method. So onSubmit will receive my form, which is a control group. So make sure to import control group at the top two. And here what I will do is I will access my Firebase service, will set my user because that is what I do in the on submit when I submit this form. And what I want to do here is I want to pass my first and my last name. So therefore I access my form, which I pass to this on submit method here. And there I have access the value property. And here I can just access first name because I bound this first name input field here with ng control to well the name first name and respectively the last name input field is bound to last name through ng control here so therefore we can access it like a property or yeah property of a javascript object here so form value last name down here and now this alone won't enable us to output it. This just returns the, well, it chases an object basically, but it doesn't even fire the request to be honest. What we have to do is we have to subscribe to this observable because again, HTTP in Angular 2 by default uses observables and we have to subscribe to those observables to, well, to basically fire them or to start whatever they should do in this case, send a request and also to be able to listen to anything that which comes back from this request. So in this case, um, in the subscribe function, I get two cases. First one is I get back a user. So user is what I, yeah, what, what I get back. In this case, I want to set this response equal to, to this user, but first I will stringify the JSON because remember we're, transforming our response to JSON and we have to stringify it to actually be able to output it in our well HTML code. Well, the other cases we get an error. In this case, I just want to lock this to the console. Okay, so this should work. Just reformat my code a little bit here. And then I got my onGetUser method. Now here, I'll also access my Firebase service and I will call my get user method there. And then again, I will subscribe to this observable. And I got two cases here too. I get back a user. In this case, well, again, I will set my response to the stringified version of that. Or I get an error. In this case, I want to log it to the console. Oops. Okay, so this should work. Let's give it, a, give it a try. And I got an error here in my Firebase service. Um, last, no, this should be last name. So I think my autocomplete nuts me there. So let's try it again. Yeah, so this worked. And if we have a look at our dashboard or in our application or database here, we can see this was successfully inserted. Now let me reload here and get the user and we're getting it back. Awesome. So this works and this is basically how we can use the Firebase RESTful API to set data and get data. And obviously we can do a lot more with it. So either you dive into the Firebase RESTful API documentation or well, I guess I'll probably do some more videos and maybe we will refine our Firebase service to be more generic. See you in the next videos. Bye.